In a previous section, we photographed Annalisa in a situation where we didn't have to take the ambient light into account. In other words, we could then just choose what aperture we wanted, what ISO we wanted, and then add as much light as we needed to get correct exposure. We didn't have to take the ambient light into account. But here's a very simple scenario. We have Annalisa against a bright background. I'd love to throw that out of focus with a wider aperture and then add enough flash. Now, she's going to be underexposed compared to the brighter background, the city scene outside. And we're in Manhattan, so you're probably going to hear a lot of traffic. There's no way in Manhattan you're not going to hear traffic in the background. Now, I would have to add flash to illuminate her in relation to the background. So what I could do is just zero my needle in the background and then determine my shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Now, my shutter speed, I would like to keep it at maximum sync speed because maximum sync speed is my sweet spot. And around that, I can hinge my aperture and ISO. Now, for an aperture, 3.5, 3.2, f4, 2.8, that would be good. I don't need f16 in this case. I want shallow depth of field. So a wide -ish aperture is good, and then I want a sensible ISO, hinged, hinging around my choice of maximum sync speed as my appropriate shutter speed. So in this case, we have Anlisa, underexposed, background, I determine my exposure on her. So let's get into shot. So now my background, I can expose correctly by zeroing my needle, or I can go a little over or a little under. This is not a kind of background that I have to have absolutely perfect, correct exposure. So just zeroing my needle, and I look at my display in my camera, and I'm at 200 ISO, it looks a little under, I'm gonna take it up to 400 ISO. At 400 ISO, 250th, I get F4. So just a quick test shot. Looks good. My white balance is cloudy, because I'm shooting with flash. But I'm shooting in raw, so I can always change the white balance afterwards. So just a test shot there of the background, it looks good. I can throw it out of focus, it'll be a nice, symmetrical pattern behind her. And a test shot of Annalisa at that setting without flash. She's underexposed as we expected. And now I enable my wireless transmitter to trip my flash. And in this case, I want to shoot TTL, because it gets me there faster. For consistency, I would do manual, but right now, TTL will get me there faster. So zero compensation on my flash, and it's overexposed, so I'm gonna dial it down. Now that's the thing with DTL, is that we have to be, we'll be guided by the display on our LCD to see whether we're under or overexposed. So there is a little bit of uh, guesswork there, I would say, because you have, you're now relying on the brightness of your camera's display. And I dialed it down by one and a third stop, and actually looks good. Let's take a few more shots. And Lisa, bring your hands into play. Because I want to shoot horizontal, so I kind of need your hands in the, in the shot as well. And drop your chin a little bit. Looking wonderful. So those were the shots with TTL. Now with manual flash, we'd have to be a little more precise. We'd bring in the handheld meter probably. We could use the histogram on the white if she wore white. And she's not wearing white. I had to look. But uh, you could use, uh, if, somebody, if the model or subject had a white shirt, you could use that, the histogram method. That works. Alternately, just have somebody hold up a napkin or a handkerchief and use that as your white to, to use for the histogram. In this case, I'm going to use manual flash and a handheld meter. Now, at this point, I'm using wireless transmitters that are TTL capable, but I'm going to revert to the old plus two pocket wizard units that are just manual because my handheld meter has a pocket wizard module in that'll trip my plus two unit firing my flash. So let's do that. So now in using manual flash, I decided that we're going to go with the old plus two pocket wizard units. There's no intelligence between the camera and the flash now. It'll only trip the flash. No ISO information, no aperture information, nothing is communicated to the flash. So in this case, we decided we want F4 at 400 ISO for that specific background, and that's how much flash we're going to add. Now remember, manual flash, aperture and ISO, the two things in my camera, power and distance. Now the distance is going to remain the same, Aperture and ISO is now given for us because of what we decided 
we want to do in relation to the background. F4, 400 ISO. Now, my f I have a pocket wizard connected to the flash. The flash is set to manual output. I just randomly set it to full output. Now, I have a flash meter here that will trip the flash and tell me what aperture I'm getting for, for that power. So 400 ISO, and I'm going to trip it, and it tells me F9. Now, the difference between F9 and F4 is a bunch of clicks. The simplest way for me to do it is count the clicks on my camera. So if I could go to F4, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 clicks. 7 clicks between F4 and F9. So I can go to the back of my flash and dial the power down 7 clicks. In other words, 7 one thirds of a stop. In other words, 2 full stops and a third. I can dial it down, and that should give me F4. So I'm going to go over there and just adjust it. So I randomly set my camera to full power when we started with Annalisa, but it gave us too much light. It gave me F9 for that distance. So I want F4. And the difference between F4 and F9 as we counted the clicks on the camera was nine clicks. So nine clicks is two and a third of a stop. So now I have full power there. I need to take it seven clicks down. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I'm at a third of a stop under quarter power, two and a third stops under full, and we go with our flash meter now, that, will, that should give us F4. And it'll be very similar on the Canon flash, I'll show you how. So here's how we change on the Canon flash, exactly the same as on the Nikon flash. Full power, I'm in manual, I need to bring it down, so let's just brighten up a little bit there. I need to bring it seven clicks down from full power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A third of a stop under quarter power. That was seven clicks. I could count the clicks here on this dial. I just hit enter again, and there I am, fixed. Great, so I adjusted my flash down by two and a third stops, seven clicks. So I should be getting F4 now. So it will take my flash power down from F9 to F4. So let's see if it worked. F4, there we go, perfect. So for this distance, I changed my power to give me F4 at 400 ISO. The flash meter told me how much power I was getting, and I dialed it down by an appropriate amount to give me the aperture that I needed. So let's see how it works. Perfect, it looks absolutely sensational. And Lisa, we're still shooting horizontal, so just bring me your hands into play there, there we go. Perfect. So when we photograph your subject in relation to available light with off-camera flash, we inevitably start with available light. We use that as our point to anchor our settings around. We might overexpose a little bit, underexpose a little bit. We have flexibility there quite often. Then you add that much flash to it. Now with TTL flash, I let the camera and the flash decide for me if it looked too bright or too dark. I dial my flash exposure compensation up and down. Manual flash is much more methodical, but it's much more precise. Handheld meter would tell me what I was getting, and I would adjust my power up and down for the aperture that I wanted. Dead simple.